Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV and Boat. So I'm back with a longer term follow-up video on the SOK 280 amp hour lithium battery. Uh, previous video, I tore it all apart and we did a test on its built-in self-heating capabilities. Uh, since then, I've been using it in uh, my truck toolbox power station, sort of used this as a test bed for various equipment I review. And it's performed quite well. I found that the overall capacity is a little higher. Um, it's rated at 280 amp hours. To me, I found I could get about 285 amp hours out of it. In this video, I plan to test the max charge and discharge rates. The spec sheet lists a maximum discharge current of 200 amps with a peak of 250 amps. I'm going to test that using my 3000 watt MotorMaster inverter, kind of a typical use case for RVers. I'm also going to test the maximum charge rate of 120 amps using my Xantrex Freedom X Pro inverter charger, which is capable of putting out 150 amps of charging power, so it should be a good test. Uh, also to note in the teardown video, when I looked at the BMS board, it had a it had a rating printed on it, which was incorrect. The actual uh, max charge and discharge rating was higher at 200 and 120. So let's get to the video. Let's do a max discharge test on this SOK battery. So I'm just going to record its app for you. right at 100 percent charge hooked up a 3000 watt inverter that should be able to get us up over 200 amps of draw so first we'll turn on a space heater turn it up full and it brings us up to around 70.9 amps Now we got a heat gun so we can bring it up in stages. There we are. 204 amps. Just gonna let that go. See if we can handle that for an extended period here. We're putting out about 2100 watts which would be enough to run any type of microwave anything that you could plug into a regular household outlet a regular household outlet usually is about 1850 watts so if you had one of these batteries in your rv system or boat you could basically run anything you could plug in if you needed to run a lot more you'd probably want to put a couple in parallel <clears throat> then you'd have a max 400 amps out but seems to be handling it no problem voltage is showing 12.5 200 amps well that's been going for about 10 minutes no problem just going to step it up one more level here now we're at 236, close to 240 amps. Yeah, so it's handling the space heater on full, 1500 watt space heater and a 1500 watt heat gun. Now the voltage on this is only 115, so it's a little bit lower, the actual wattage coming out. Yeah, my inverter is down to 11.6 volts, so a little bit of voltage drop going on. But yeah, it's handling a steady 235 amps reported on my meter. Its internal app reports 240 amps, 12.4 volts, so it's quite a robust battery. As far as discharge goes. Okay, let's do the 
charging test. Max charging, rated charging is 120 amps. So I just want to see if it's capable of doing that. Right now my solar coming in and I got 10 amps coming out of my inverter charger which I can adjust up. So we're getting pretty close to 50 amps. So I'll just adjust my uh, inverter here. Antrex. Let's move this up a bit. We'll go with another 50 amps here. Now we're up to about 90 amps of charging level. Add some more. 60, 65 amps. It's at 101. So there's 75 amps on that charger. That should get us to 120. Not quite, we're still at 110. There we are, 125. Oh, you can see it shut down there. So when I hit 125, it's coming back up again. Slowly coming up. 104, 124. And it goes into protection state. So let me just adjust the charger, back it off a bit. That should keep it under the 120, I suspect. 119, 120.07. There we are. So it is handling 119, 120, but if I went to 125, it went into protection state. So I'd call that a success. Let's drop that down a bit. Let it charge at about 100 amps here. See if it handles it for a longer period. So it seems to handle that no problem. One thing I've noticed with this app though, it doesn't track the percentage very well at all. You know, I was discharging it doing a discharge test and it didn't budge off 100%. Even though its voltages would, would assume so. I don't know what's going on there. There is a, a frequently asked question kind of thing online about setting this up, calibrating it. And it talks about going, discharging the battery all the way to zero state and then charging it all the way to 100%, maybe twice before this thing will become accurate. So I don't know, I've had the battery down pretty low a couple times, but it still hasn't really been accurate as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's a small thing and maybe I'm just not getting it uh, adjusted properly yet. Anyway, good news is it's handling 100 amps, no problem. So the battery passed the charging discharging test with flying colors. Um, just give you my likes and dislikes. Um, I like the heavy duty case and the, the terminals, very nice terminals on it with long, uh, with long bolts too. Excellent internal build quality. We saw that when I tore it down. High grade lithium prismatic cells. Self heating feature for low temp use. Uh, easy disassembly for repairs. This is a real biggie. I think if anything ever goes wrong or you wanna take it apart, if you have any problems, it's very uh, user friendly in that way. It has a Bluetooth app. Um, you can connect up to four in series or up to 10 in parallel according to the manual. 
um, pretty good support. Um, you can email them and they answer and uh, USA Warehouse. Uh, economically priced, I see right now they even got it at $9.99 for 280 amp hours and pretty well built batteries, not too bad. And they have a seven year warranty. I think the company has been around for three or four years now. Uh, dislikes, just a few. It's a lot heavier due to the, the metal use. I, I kind of like the metal case, but you know, for people that uh, can't lift very heavy loads, it, it might be a deal breaker there. Uh, side terminals may also may be an issue in some installs. Um, most batteries, you know, have top terminals, so a lot of battery bays and stuff are built for that, whereas these ones have terminals on the side. Uh, I found that Bluetooth signal was kind of weak. Um, I guess because of the metal case, I couldn't go very far away from it or I would lose the, the Bluetooth signal. And the app has been a little flaky for me as far as capacity. Um, I find voltage and amperage and stuff like that works fine, but the capacity rating has been a little off a few times. And I don't know if that's, I haven't followed their exact directions by fully discharging it to zero and then fully charging it to 100%. I think it needs some calibration time as far as that goes. And then finally, there's actually screw heads on the very bottom. It's a metal case, but there's some screw heads that kind of stick out. So if you were to put that on some surface that, you know, you don't want to scratch and move it around, you may scratch that. Anyway, that's kind of my review. Um, any questions or comments, leave them below. Cheers, guys.